and welcome to Serena Speaks. And in this video, as requested by you guys, I'm going to go through how I accuracy check my prescriptions. Now, every pharmacist develops their own way and their own style of how they like to check their prescriptions. So this isn't the only way to do it. This is just my preferred way of doing it. And hopefully it will help you guys too. Um, what I would say, though, is that in some cases you do have to self check. It's not ideal, and if you can avoid it, do so. But in some situations, you might be understaffed or you don't have any dispensers, so you have to self-check. If you do, then try and give yourself as much as a gap as you can from when you dispense the medication to then when you go and do the final check. The reason for that being is that when you then go and do your final check, you're at least giving yourself um, enough time for your brain to just relax from it a bit. And also you're looking at it then with a fresh pair and a fresh set of eyes. So like I said, sometimes it can't be avoided. Sometimes you do have to self-check. But in this situation, it's a completely made up scenario that I've created. I've created a fake private prescription. I've created a fake label to go along with it. Um, so it's all completely made up. So let's just go along with it. Okay, so here I have my completely made up private prescription, the box and the label that goes along with it. So first and foremost, let's check the prescription. So I've got my prescriber details. Also, this pen is amazing. I mean, it just had to be in this video. Like, just, just look at it. Simple pleasures in life. I'd never take it to work because I would just lose it and that would make me very upset. But anyway, so we've got our pres um, prescriber details, their GMC number, their address, their contact number, and then we've got our patient. So here we have Mr. Santa Claus. You can tell I'm feeling very festive. Date of birth, address, and he's been prescribed amoxicillin 500 milligram capsules, 21, one TDS. We've got our signature and again, our prescriber details. I mean, this is a very busy time of year for Mr. Santa Claus. No wonder he's not feeling particularly well. You know, he's really inundated with work at the moment. Must be a very stressful time. Might not be looking after himself very well. Got this bacterial infection. We want to make him better in time for Christmas. So what we're going to do, well, the way that I do this is I compare what's written on the prescription to what's on the box, what's on the prescription to the label and the box to the label. So first, let's start off with the prescription to the actual box. So I've got amoxicillin, amoxicillin, 500 milligrams, 500 milligrams, capsules, capsules. And as I'm going along, I actually like to tick it because I find that at least then you are acknowledging, okay, this is what is written on the two. It's 21, it's 21. So again, I've done a little tick. Now let's compare what's on the prescription to what's on the label. So again, I've got 21 capsules, and here I have 21 capsules. Amoxicillin, amoxicillin, 500 milligrams, 500 milligrams, capsules and capsules. And again, I just like to do a little tick at the end just to make sure it's acknowledging to myself that I've checked that line. Now the directors say one TDS, so one capsule three times a day. Yep, I've acknowledged that, I'll do another tick. And we need to check the name. So it's for Mr. Santa Claus, check Mr. Santa Claus. And again, I do a tick. I do a tick on the box rather than on the actual labels. So now I wanna compare what's written on my box to what's written on my actual label. So again, I've got 21, 21. Amoxicillin, amoxicillin. 500 milligrams, 500 milligrams. Capsules, capsules. And that's my check done. I'm happy, I'm satisfied that this is all correct, that the prescription does match the box, the prescription matches the label, and the box matches the label. Now, I can sign my checked box. And it's also a good idea to make sure that um, you do check that the medication is still in date and it hasn't expired. And usually what I do is, um, once I have checked it, it's actually written on this side, um, I give that a tick as well. So as you can see, there's a lot of ticks on my boxes. That doesn't matter. You can scribble all over it if you really need be, but that at least helps me that I know that I have acknowledged that what has been written on each of these three different items do match each other. Kind of feel like a teacher as well, doing a little tick off everywhere. Sorry, I think at moments the camera went a little bit out of focus, but hopefully you gathered from what was meant to be checked on the prescription, on the actual box and on the actual label. 
Now I mentioned making sure that you check the patient's name that is on the label. That's because sometimes you're handed over a whole wad of prescriptions and that wad of prescriptions might contain Mr. John Smith and Mrs. Janet Smith's prescriptions all in one go. And you don't really read the names properly, so when it's being dispensed, um, it's all being dispensed under Mr. John Smith's name. So this is why the ticking process is actually quite good, because then when it comes to doing a check on that particular item, you'll see, oh wait, this is for Mrs. Janet Smith, not for Mr. John Smith. Okay, let's get this checked, um, let's um, redo this and make sure that we do put it under the right patient's name. Another mistake that I used to make as a pre-reg quite often was actually getting capsules and tablets mixed up. Um, so just be wary of that. And again, even as a pre-reg, do the ticking process because it'll get you used to actually checking that, oh yeah, capsules it says on here, not tablets, right, I need to change this before it goes to the final check. Um, and you know, you're, you're not blindly then just dispensing or sticking labels on a box, you're actually doing a check of, oh yeah, right, this is what it's supposed to be, um, let me amend it if need be. And be careful of quantities as well. Not everything does come in packs of 28. You've got Tamsulosin, some brands of Crestor, um, Fluoxetine, they come in packs of 30. So just be wary of your quantities too. And when it comes to handwritten prescriptions, they are, are one of my biggest pet hates in life. I think it's, it's a long running joke that doctors have really bad handwriting. But actually in some situations, it puts patient safety at jeopardy and that isn't funny. And you know, when you have a doctor's prescription and it's just got squiggles everywhere and you can't for the life of you make out what was written on there, you're then having to ring up the reception or the GP surgery or whatever, the hospital, wherever it may be. Sometimes you can't talk to the GPs directly, so you have to wait until they're available to call you back. This then wastes your time, it wastes the doctor's time, it wastes the patient's time. It's a delay in giving out the patient the medication that they need, what they, they need to start it straight away. It's just putting patient safety at jeopardy. And we're living in a time when technology is at the forefront of everything. So I don't know why we can't just abolish handwritten prescriptions and just do computer generated prescriptions. But on behalf of pharmacists everywhere, um, if you're a prescriber and you're watching this, please, please, as a Christmas present to us, as it's the festivities and the joyous time, as a present to us, please write your prescriptions in your bestest and neatest handwriting. We will appreciate it so, so much. And like I said, overall, it won't waste our time, your time or the patient's time. So if you have any prescribers that you know, please share this video onto them. Let's help each other out. And yeah, let's just, these handwritten prescriptions, I just, I really don't like them. Um, but like I said, if you can do it in your neatest handwriting, that would be great. And I would love to forever see it. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and I hope that when it comes to you checking your own prescriptions, whether you're a pre-reg and you're dispensing, you're a newly qualified pharmacist or you're a pharmacist who's been practicing for a while, hopefully the ticking technique, as I like to call it, will help you out um, and it will just reinsure that actually everything does match everything. Um, and don't be afraid to scribble all over the boxes if need be. I've had some dispensers look at me and be like, Serena, what are you doing? Why are you scribbling all over that box? But hey, if scribbling all over a box is what it takes to make sure I don't make a mistake and make sure that the patient gets the medication that they need and that there's no errors involved, then scribbling on boxes is what I'm going to do. So yeah, just ticking technique. It's quite a useful one. So give it a go if you haven't already. So I will upload um, the fake prescription and the fake label onto my Facebook page so you can have a closer look at it, maybe have a look at it whilst... Um, whilst you're looking over this video, give you a chance to actually practice the ticking technique. And until next time, good luck with your revision and happy revising.